So I switch this button. It sends one button click to the game. The game turns on my hard points and sends a signal back, lighting this one. And now the Arduino knows this one is in this position and this is the state of the game. Hi and welcome to the Creative Geek, where we help makers of games, toys and playful technology to develop their craft by understanding play. Right now I'm making a sci-fi cockpit simulator and you can follow along through the process and hopefully learn some things along the way. If you like this combination of knowledge and making, click the subscribe button. That way you can follow along from cardboard prototype to fully functioning spaceship cockpit. I get that it's not completely obvious how this whole thing fits together. So let me try to explain it for you. First, I have a screen and a computer. Let's symbolize the computer with a keyboard. In this, two things are running. Elite Dangerous and Node Red. Every time something happens in Elite Dangerous, a signal gets sent to Node Red so that it knows. And this way, Elite Dangerous always communicates with Node Red. Although things that happen in Node Red can, can't be read in Elite Dangerous. Then, I have my gamepad. In this gamepad, there are two Arduino controllers. Leonardo and Uno. The Leonardo works as a joystick. Everything that happens here when I move the controllers is read by the Leonardo. And the Leonardo sends this information to the computer and more precisely to Elite Dangerous. I can play Elite Dangerous or any other game on this computer using this controller and the Leonardo as an ordinary joystick. So this is just a joystick talking to this game. But the next step is that since Elite Dangerous can tell when things are happening and I can read this through my Node-RED server, I can send that information to the other controller, the Arduino Uno. And this controller can update the keyboard, telling it the state of the game. So, for example, if I fall down the landing gear in Elite Dangerous, Elite Dangerous sends a signal using its journal files that gets read by Node-RED. Node-RED sends that information over to the UNO, and UNO can switch on a light on the keypad here. And further, the UNO can keep track of everything that this one sends, and therefore it's got an understanding of the state of the game. So, when I flip to the landing gear, this one knows if it previously was out or not, because this one has sent the information. And therefore, I can use flip switches here, even though I'm just using it as pressing a button. If the landing gear is out, and this switch gets flipped to out, nothing happens. But if the landing gear is out, and this switch gets flipped to fold them in again, then this Uno sends a signal to this Leonardo, telling it, press the button, for falling in the landing gear, which gets sent to Elite Dangerous. So I switch this button. It sends one button click to the game. The game turns on my hard points and sends a signal back, lighting this one. And now the Arduino knows this one is in this position and this is the state of the game. So if I switch this one, the game retracts the hard points and then turns off that light. So just as an example, if I switch this really fast, it sends the button click to the game, but then doesn't recognize that I made this. So now when I switch it, nothing happens. But when I switch it down again, it turns it off. Thereby trying to keep the switches in the right position, even when something goes wrong. As an added bonus, this one is a web server. So I can have web pages or web calls going out from it. So that I can set up web pages showing me the state of the game. or sending the information over to a secondary computer that can do other things. Meaning that I could, for example, have a tablet with a touch interface for some information. If this got you interested in the project, check out the full playlist over here. Or check some other creative geekiness over here. And remember to subscribe.
See you around.